Okay, so first of all, let's do a little bit of unsealing together and let's check out. So first of all, this thing weighs quite heavy and that is always a good sign when it comes to the, the case design itself. But the first part was quite interesting when it comes to the specs. So it only comes with a 6800 40. The reason I'm saying it now is because there is new versions out there or coming soon. So 32 gigabyte of RAM and one terabyte of storage. That's going to be more than enough to play a couple of install a couple of games. So you see there are all kinds of different configurations where we're having different models like the Mega Pro MX. SR LT over here, different colors with different storage capacities over there. Then having the memory even all the way up to 64 gigabytes. And of course, the plug type is going to be for me European. And it seems to be they're having a lot. We do have Windows and Linux, so it's kind of interesting that they even have the option for two different operating systems. I don't know if you can order from the website, but you can always check it out yourself if you want to. At the front, we're finding an on and off switch over here. So let's click it. It's a very long press and with a micro switch underneath. We're having the USB port and normal to 3.0 and USB-C and the jack out. At the back, we're finding the input for the power supply, the USB 4, USB type C. Then we're having an HDMI, display port. We're having over here another two USB 3.0s and we do have a dual RG45 configuration. Wow, you can just see over here the massive cooling man. But let's open it up. The configuration is quite nice. And I mean, particularly when it comes to, let's say the way how they did this. Some of them, you need to peel out the rubbers. You don't need to do that because the rubbers are implemented in the construction over here. So that's great. So they also put on here, I need to get into the BIOS. So you pressing, press delete to enter the BIOS and F7 to enter boot menu. So that is quite convenient. Some brands also do that too, but yeah, normally I was like ramming my keyboard to finding the freaking like right button for getting into the BIOS. But however, let's see, uh, let's pull it out. It's the same construction that the B-Link has. So the bottom part is made of metal, so it looks kind of nice, okay. In here, we're finding the special fan or the tiny fan for giving this thing some cooling. We need to remove Another four screws over here in the corners to get underneath. So this is quite a nice construction. And I mean, when you're looking at the way how they assembled everything. So this is done in metal plate itself with some thermal paste. So the thermal paste has been implemented over here on the NVMe. You can see that we do have like one massive cooling block that's implemented in this piece of metal. You need to be very careful because the fan it's connected over here on the main board. I can just plug it up. I don't want to do that because I'm kind of lazy sometimes. But let's see what kind of configuration we're having over here in the inside. Two NVMe slots over there. But it's kind of cool that they are using Kingston for the storage capacity. I'm very glad they're doing it because we do have some problems with these weird Chinese brands sometimes. So I'm glad it went for like saying a brand like Kingston or Samsung or whatsoever. We do have a data two duo dims over here. So it's going to be great if you want to play some games, but also when it comes to emulation, you have to dual channel power. But that's it. If you want to replace it, it's fairly easy to open up and everything seems to be looking quite nice. But if you want to reach inside, I must say that this is quite easy to open up. You need to be very careful with the antennas of the Wi-Fi. But one of the interesting things is that this thing does come with built-in speakers. And you can actually see them over there. So that's quite interesting. So I'm guessing this is the amplifier and it's been going to be connected with the main board. And of course the amplifier is going to be amplifying the speakers. So an interesting construction. And if you're going to be replacing the battery itself, you can just see on top over here. So you need to lift out the main board if you want to replace the battery itself. But let's do a chit chat about the specifications. We're over here having the AMD Ryzen. It's the 7. It's kind of confusing because I was almost sure it said like AMD Ryzen 9 on the box. But it comes with the 7840HS, max TDP 54 watts. So it comes with the mobile chip, the 780M from ATI. The main board is manufactured by Herc. Memory, DDR5, 32 gigabyte. Over here we're having the two slots. Configuration. Graphical wise, ready to discuss this is the AMD Radeon 780M graphics. And let's do a quick, let's say, stress test or something like that. Just to see, can we push this thing? And how are the temperatures? Today is not quite a hot day. And so when it comes to the temperatures, oh boy, it's spinning up now. And it's hitting the 83 Celsius. 
So it's a quite hot situation over here when it comes to this. And it started, I must say, blowing a lot of lesser heat out. But I find it still very silent for a mini PC actually. So at the moment it's hitting the 88 Celsius. And can we say that it's actually going to be thermal throttling at this point? But let's get into the Cinebench R23 with a quick test. And you can just see that it's again heating up 88 Celsius. It's turned as thermal throttling over here. It's even hitting 88.1. Now we're going to be looking into the average CPU mark. It's quite interesting. So I do have like a very high score over here, the 28,975. And when you're actually looking inside all the specifications, it's absolutely not a bad, let's say, chipset in the end. It has been released in the first quarter of 2023, so it's an older model as we're making this video. And going back to the Cinebench for the multi-core, let's say the points it's getting is 15,844. And it's quite nice and comparable even with an AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X. So when you're looking at the specs, this thing does hold up when it comes to certain other, let's say, competition and older models. Okay, so when it comes to these devices, I always bring these things with friends, the mini PCs, particularly with the AMD Ryzen chipset. And that has to do if you just want to play some old school indie games, they are absolutely great. And the same goes also when it comes to, let's say, some older, let's say, AAA games. However, let's get into some Rogue Force. And with just some basic specifications, this game runs absolutely amazing. Two, one, go! So one of the fun things we can actually do is pushing this thing to the limit and that's what I wanted to do. So first of all we're going to be doing is putting it on full screen because it's quite annoying. So let's apply that first, yes. And then we're going to be getting into the game with a max FPS 60. There is no way of setting this to unlimited, so we need to have an only choice between 30 and 60 over here. And then we're going to be putting everything to the higher setting. And the doggy agrees like always. Next up, Dead Alive, and this is a game that we do need a little bit of a tweaking. So if you want to put this thing on the maximum, it's not going to be pulling it off. So the thing I wanted to do is getting everything on high, but let's set the shadow resolutions and everything to one. So that's what I wanted to check out, because it's going to be quite interesting to play this game. It's a beautiful fighting game and quite demanding. I've been testing it for quite a long time now, and you do see that some of the mini PCs will struggle. I hope to receive some new data from you. Yo, think you can keep up with me? Another game I want to check out is some Tekken 8. This game cannot be played on the fullest highest setting, but it is quite interesting to see how powerful these mini PCs have become and they can even play later games or let's say newer titles. But this is actually the setup that they reconfigured for let's say starting the game in combination with the piece of hardware they're actually using. So seeing this like medium settings on 1080p, let's boot it up. 
it will automatically like sometimes tweak it but i think it's quite interesting to see that we can play such a new game on an older chipset Round one, fight! Basically moving back to an, I want to say an indie game, but just a two-dimensional one. And the reason is very simple. I love this game. Red Roger Radical Edition is a lot of fun. However, this is a quite interesting one to test the mini PCs with, because where we have indie games are looking quite basic. But graphical-wise, this can be very interesting to check, because some of them are really demanding. So full screen, 1080p, we're going to be seeing to uh, putting, let's say, anti-aliasing on disabled and putting all the other effects on extreme to see how far we can push this thing. Because I can tell you, oh boy, this is a very demanding game with a lot of effects and you will see it struggle sometimes. So FPS lock, we're just going to be putting it 144 to see how many, let's say, frames per second we're going to having with this. Dynamic shadows going to be turning on and everything else. Only anti-analyzing, we're just going to believe it as it is. Let's save it and let's get into the game. Well, when it comes to playing some indie games, there are so many games that you can just play on the mini PC. You don't need to build yourself a massive PC to play these games. And with Red Rogers, we did notice that we struggled a lot. But of course, I was pushing everything to the maximum limit. If you're going to be doing a little bit of tweaking, you can have even higher speed of frames per second with lower overall, let's say, graphics. When it comes to the graphics part, I think mostly the anti-aliasing or the shadow affecting is taking up a lot of GPU power. And we can also like restrain them and just have a more frames per second. And everything looks a little bit less detailed. So where this particular product, the Herc, it's still using the older AMD Ryzen chipset, it's still a very nice contender. The construction wise, the only thing I personally find a little bit disappointing is that they're using a lot of, let's say, plastic when it comes to this. You do see this very often, but the construction when it comes to, let's say, the intake and outtake of the cooling, it's not bad at all. Opening it up is quite easy. They even implemented an extra fan for, let's say, the cooling element for the NVMe's and everything. I do love it. So when it comes to having front three USB ports, but I love because I use these things a lot and at the back we're finding even more and if you want to use the dual like say LAN function you do have the option for that for gaming and emulation it's absolutely a beast when it comes to that it's absolutely amazing how far you can push this thank you all for watching consider subscribing and it will be great to see you in the next video